Hello everyone. In this section, I will go through some of the key concepts we will be working with all through this course. Define what data is, or we'll talk about databases, as well as the database management systems. And then we're going to talking more about what SQL is. So what is data? In order to understand data, it will be helpful to look at its various elements. Data is unorganized and unprocessed fact, and this could be in form of numbers, either positive or negative numbers, could be decimals, could be images, pictures, sound, voice. It could be any character. It could be a text. It could be a video. When data is not structured, which means uh, an unstructured data, it really has little or no meaning to us. So as we established earlier on, data could be an image. So let's say for instance, there is a man walking on the street. To us, that's just an image of someone walking and holds little or no meaning to us. Or let's say there is a young boy riding a bicycle. That's just a boy going about doing his own business and really doesn't make any difference or has any meaning to us. However, it becomes data and becomes more useful when it is observed. So data is typically derived from observations and measurement. So let's say for instance, um, using the example of someone on a bicycle, let's assume that within the city, the, the government has decided to, to implement or to have some new bike lanes. In order to do that, they would love to be sure that people are willing to use the bike lanes. And one of the observations they might want to, to take is to watch and see how many people at the moment are actually riding bicycles on the streets. Um, they may want to gather information about even gender. Uh, they might want to see, do we have more male riding, the bic riding bicycles or do we have more female riding bicycles? They may want to see which day of the week uh, the most people ride bicycle, which time of the day, maybe there's a rush hour time in the morning or in the afternoon. By observing all of this, now the one person who was just randomly riding a bicycle now becomes a data because now it's observed and can be measured. Once data has been gathered and processed, it now becomes information that we can read, understand, see patterns, and it then becomes useful for us. So there is a difference between data and information. Data in its real sense, it's just raw and cannot be used. But then once it's processed, it becomes more useful. We can understand it. We can see patterns and then we can use it for our own purposes. So we can define data as an unorganized and unprocessed facts. And again, this could be numbers, figures, images, characters, and they are typically derived from observations or measurements. What is a database? Well, simply put, a database is a collection of data. Now that we understand what data is, we can see database as where data is contained. Um, think of a container in which you have a figure, you have words, just using this image for instance. We have numbers, we have figures, we have words, and all of this is put into a container. So the database serves as a container for data. While I wouldn't want to call a shopping cart a database, this image helps us to understand what a database does, which again is to to hold and to contain different information, different you know facts, different information, different data. 
So for instance, we have the shopping cart, there's bread, there's sure that's a bottle of wine, there's vinegar, there's water, there's oh, bananas, all contained within the shopping cart. So the shopping cart is used to hold all of this data together. You've probably walked into an office and observed the a cabinet which holds file. A cabinet can be seen or is actually a database because it's used to hold folders which then contains data which contains information. Some of us might be familiar with the phone book. Um, you don't see much, you don't see this much around anymore because now people just have their phone records or contact within their mobile phone. But phone book used to be quite popular back in the day because it contains names of people and telephone number and you could just get one and find the telephone number of um, whoever is within that phone book. So but before digital computer, you know, filing cabinets, printed books, all of these we use old data and they can be considered as database. A database is a system of storing, accessing and manipulating data. To stretch that further, especially within the context of data analytics and what we're starting, we can say a database is an organized collection of structured information or data typically stored electronically in a computer system. So now we know that data is an unprocessed fact that can be further processed and leads to information that can be used. We know that a database manages or contains data. So what is a database management system? Well, a database management system is an application used to manipulate, retrieve and manage data in a database. And it is a system that interacts with the database. So think of it this way. The database itself really just contains our data. Well, we still need to be able to retrieve data from the database. For instance, let's say you go to Google and you want to find out some information about, say, the cheapest flight to, to London, for instance. Now, when you type in that search within, uh, within the Google search page, the information is actually stored within a database. Now, something has to retrieve that information, which is within the database, and then sends that information to you as a user. Another way would be, let's say for instance, you're on your application and or maybe on a mobile application, um, say Instagram, for instance, and you wanted to, to search for um, a friend that you want to add, you know, you want to add your, your friend to your, your Instagram page. Well, you type in the, the user ID of that person. That information is stored within a database. Well, the data you're actually trying to get is stored within a database. Now you need something to retrieve that data and send it to your application. That's exactly what a database management system does. There are several types of database management systems. And by the way, it's also referred to as DBMS. We have relational databases, hierarchical databases, network databases, object-oriented databases, graph databases, ER model databases, and document databases. And this is by no means all of the different database management system that we do have. Now, having said that, we will be focusing on the relational database uh, management system. Relational database management systems uh, are the most common of all database management systems. And you'll find that most databases used in business are relational databases. Data are stored in tables in a relational database management system. And the tables are divided into 
columns, which is also referred to as fields, and rows, which are the records. There is a relationship between data within a relational database management system. In other words, there is or there could be a relationship between a table and another table. So if you have multiple tables within a database, there could be a relationship. It is possible that each table is a standalone and there is no relationship. But generally, there is a relationship between data within the tables and there is a relationship between tables in a relational database management system. There are a few types, different types of relational database management systems. And these are uh, some of the, the most common ones. And we have Microsoft SQL Server. We have Oracle Database, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and IBM DB2. Like I said, there are more than the ones listed here, but these are also some of the most common ones that you will come across.